Uh, hi everyone, Rob here with an update on the face tracking tool I'm putting together. We're now at dot eight, so we're still in pre-release, but there's been a big couple of updates made that I think will save people a lot of time. So the first is relating to the experiments where I was generating synthetic faces and training the model based on those. And that's actually been successful enough where I can actually introduce some of that into this new version. So whereas before you had to add landmarks completely manually, it was a thing where people in the comments were sort of letting me know that this was causing a bit of grief and confusion. So now instead of having to do it all manually, when you pause the video to add dots, you can then use this button or press G to guess where they should go. Sometimes hitting it a couple of times generates new and better guesses, or you can press M and it will guess just the mouth, leaving all the other points you put in where they were. It's still early days for this system, so it's not always going to work terribly well, but in many cases it should speed things up so that what could take 20 minutes before now takes about two, so I'm very happy with that. And even though it doesn't always get it very precisely, it does at least get the landmarks of most of the features of the face approximately where they are, which does save a lot of time. And that will be improving over time because I can just generate hundreds and thousands of synthetic faces and data points and just throw that into the model. There's a lot of big updates in the pipeline now that will make this increasingly robust and stable and helpful. So do subscribe if that's something you want to keep an eye out for. So that's the first big thing in this update. Second is a more experimental option for webcam. So if you go into the file and go to open webcam, it will open up the, the, the system webcam. The workflow currently is the same as with recorded video. So make a new model specifically for the webcam. Pause the video with spacebar and then place the dots as you would do with any other video, trying to use the guess option wherever possible. Now that may seem like a lot of hassle, but of course once you have that model trained, it's quite resilient and the model can be loaded up at any point in future with that training safely stored away so it becomes more and more resilient over time. One of the tricky things with live webcam is that the tracking box tends to sort of jump around a bit too much. So if that does happen, use this button in the uh, bottom right to lock the position of the box and just keep your head in that box. This will hopefully improve in future versions. Uh, but yes, I have heavily demarked live webcam streaming as experimental because it's not stable enough for my liking and it's something which I hope will improve in future releases once the synthetic database grows by a couple orders of magnitude. It's also hard for me to test because my webcam sucks, uh, but the underlying technique is exactly the same for webcam as it is with pre-recorded video. So if you have a well-lit room with a high quality webcam capable of 60 FPS, there's no real reason why it can't be as good as pre-recorded video. And you can of course then stream that live into something like Unreal or Blender or uh, export it as a recording. So those are the two big things for .8, uh, but also as you will have seen, there are some new assets for the provided stock model, which are just sort of skin textures. Um, and also the shape key names have been matched with LiveLink and FaceCap if you want to use those alternatives, whilst I continue to bring StrongTrack up to the level where it can compete with the stability of those offerings. These are not massively high quality textures, but they are quite useful to get an idea of what's going on with the performance. So looking at the lips and the eyes and the eyebrows in particular, which a plain gray model just can't really provide. And like the model, again, they, these are all copyright free. Again, pretty amateur texturing, but it's a good starting point maybe for some people out there. And I've actually added a button in the example project, which will allow you to switch between having StrongTrack provide you with tracking data via OSC and having LiveLink provide you with that data via the epic live link face tracking app which I covered in a tutorial a few weeks ago so you can compare the two systems and see how they differ. Uh, these textures are actually using this same uh, AI generated assets that fit into the synthetic database and they were purchased using donations that a couple of people very kindly made so a massive thanks again to those people. Uh, your contributions literally made this update feasible. And there is a link in the description below if you're looking for a way to help speed things up and uh, keep me releasing as often as I can. And last but certainly not least, there are some big, big quality of life improvements. So basically dot eight is dot seven, but it's much faster to use. And it's a little bit harder to make it crash by doing things out of sequence. So there you have it. I think uh, the workflow is definitely similar to dot seven. So if you want a full walkthrough of that process, I suggest you look up the previous video I did on dot seven, link in the description and in the little uh, corner thing. So yeah, I think those are some really big wins in terms of usability. I'm still not happy with the fidelity of the animation extraction yet. So I wouldn't blame you if you want to hold off for now, but there's a lot of the fiddly stuff that's been finally worked out and implemented. And a lot of the groundwork's been laid for 
a really big feature coming up in, in dot nine, I hope, which is a ability to actually make full use of all the 52 shapes and then tie that back into what's being extracted out of the video. Because actually right now, the extraction is only being done with about sort of six or seven shapes, and that's obviously a small fraction of 52. So I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, I'm still also hoping to talk about head-mounted cameras in an upcoming video, because that's actually what motivated me to make this software in the first place, but I just wanted to pivot what I was doing in response to some of the feedback I was getting in the comments. So thanks to all those making suggestions in the comments below, and do continue to do so. Uh, but I'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching everybody and uh, have a nice day.